Welcome to the Front Office Exchange, where we take a look at the careers of executives and rising stars within the sports business. Now, here's your host, Jake Failing. Welcome to episode 17 of the Front Office Exchange podcast, where today we'll hear from Michael Ehrlich, Director of Public Relations for Adidas. Now, I was introduced to Michael by a previous guest. Check out episode 12 with Chris Yates. Uh, But I had already been following Michael on social media, where he is very active and engaging and posts some serious footwear pics. If you're into footwear, uh, he's a great follow. Uh, In addition to his work with Adidas, you could find him on Front Office Sports, writing for the Sports Business Journal, and mentoring young professionals just entering sports business. Uh, Michael was awesome, and much like others I've had on this podcast to date, he was and is very giving of his time. Uh, In addition to his mentoring, he has guest lectured at his alma mater at USC, Southern California, and he's looking to do more teaching in 2017. He also gives some great advice, including how to better manage your time, and he gives a peek inside his day-to-day at Adidas, and it's not just sports, he talks about Kanye as well, uh, and everything else that he does there, uh, which sounds like a really unique job he's got, and I know they just opened uh, a new uh, store in New York, which again, you can see on his social media feed as well. So, without further ado, Further ado, Michael Ehrlich of Adidas. Michael Ehrlich, welcome to Front Office Exchange. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Thank you so much for having me and uh, happy uh, early Thanksgiving to you and yours. Yep. Same to you. Um, So I was excited to get to talk to you, uh, have followed you on Twitter, um, have seen some of the stuff that you've done uh, for Front Office Sports. We've had uh, uh, someone on earlier in an earlier episode. Uh, obviously, a uh, very similar name, and and a lot of what you guys do is is great in sports business. Um, but wanted to hear not only about that, but also what you do right now for Adidas. So let's start there, and then we'll work backwards and and work through your career. Perfect, sounds great. Uh, so I'm currently the director of public relations for Adidas, uh, and I actually sit within our Portland-based newsroom. Uh, which includes our public relations team, our social strategists, our community managers, and our analytics team. So uh, really a diverse uh, and unique take on storytelling overall, uh, really focusing on being the most talked about brand in the industry and really creating a 24-7, 365 uh, editorial cadence. And how long have you been with Adidas? Uh, I've been in-house for almost six years uh, out in Portland, and before that, I spent three years at Adidas's PR agency of record in Los Angeles, so uh, quite some time promoting uh, Adidas across all of their sport and style categories. You're a West Coast guy, right? You're from- I am, yes. Yeah. So uh, calling in today from uh, home in Santa Barbara, California, uh, but based in uh, in Portland, Oregon at our U.S. headquarters. Got it. So I've been to Portland a couple times, just an amazing city. Most of my career has been on the East Coast. Uh, just curious, outside of Adidas, what's it like to live and work in Portland? Yeah, it's it's definitely a, a creative uh, hotspot, um, especially in the sporting goods industry. Um, we have quite a few competitors uh, locally as well, so uh, definitely a lot of uh, creativity and a, a lot of focus on uh, sports in general. Um, you know, coming, I actually moved to Portland from Los Angeles, so going from a big city to a, a little city uh, was certainly a transition. But Portland has got a ton of great culture um, from music and art, and obviously they're famous for their food and wine and beer, Um, but it really is a passionate sports town. Um, The Blazers, uh, the Timbers, um, and obviously all the the college uh, teams in the area. So it's definitely a a sports uh, area for sure, and especially in uh, in the sporting goods industry in particular. I wondered if you were going to mention the beer thing. I'm a beer guy, and I went out there, and you can't walk a block without hitting three of them. Yeah, I live across the street from one, and it, it's uh, it's always fun for me when when friends and family visit because there's so much to oh. do. Um, obviously, take them shopping at our at our store, but uh, you know, from a from a beer, wine, uh, food, it's it's definitely a, a foodie dream. Now, you mentioned the store. So Adidas, is, you know, some people may know it for soccer, some people may know it for basketball. Obviously, you're a player in all sports, and then lifestyle as well with Kanye. Um, how does someone in PR 
wrap their brain around all of these industries and sectors? Do you guys break it into sport by sport? Do you sit over a cluster of sports? How does that work there? So I sit uh, above all of sport and style for the U.S. Um, so I have a team under me that are the day-to-day -day, uh, PR leads for each of the categories. Um, so everything for basketball and football to our original side of the business, uh, our action sports, etc. So um, we are fully represented across uh, the entire spectrum of, of everything that the brand has to offer. All right, so you've touched on a little bit, you know, your your background in California and your careers, but let's go all the way back. Um, so, talk to me how you go from California to where you are now in Portland. I know you've had some time with some agencies. Uh, it looks like you started with the Lakers, um, but uh, walk through that career path for us. Yeah, I think from my earliest memory, I, I knew I wanted to work in sports. Um, and I think when I stopped growing as a 6'2", 7th grader, uh, I realized that my dreams of playing in the NBA or the NFL uh, were not realistic. So um, I combined my passion for sport with uh, a strong interest in reading and writing and, and critical thinking. And, um, you know, I, I spent my, my time as a, as a middle schooler and high schooler um, doing a ton of sports writing, um, both from, uh, you know, our school papers. My high school had its own radio station. So I started the first uh, sports talk radio show there back in the day and, and, and knew somehow that I would be involved in sport communications in general. I just didn't know which uh, specific lane. Um, so uh, I went to USC, um, a very, very, very proud Trojan. Um, and upon entering college, I honestly, I had a challenge deciding what track to follow. Um, they're famous for their Annenberg School of Communication. Um, and I didn't know if I wanted to specialize in print or broadcast journalism. So I went in as, as an English major. Um, and it's funny to tell the story because a lot of people scratch their head and say, you know, what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, I quickly found out that I did not want to be an English major anymore after a semester or two. Um, what happened? So great about Just bad experience UF. or <laughs> – uh, just a lot of reading and a lot of the sort of the old English texts right. um, versus the the, the uh, literature that I enjoyed in high school. Um, and what was so great about USC and, and the um, advisors that I had and the, the career center overall is they really allow you to um, choose um, across uh, the entire spectrum of curriculum. And I, I dabbled in a few different majors and, and found a few different paths. And I stumbled upon American studies and ethnicity as a major. Hmm. And everybody to this day still asks, what is that? What does that mean? And it really is a, a liberal arts education at a big university. Um, I was able to hand select uh, my courses. Uh, I took a ton of uh, communication, business, poli sci, music, art, film, uh, sports business, et cetera. So it was really a, a diverse and unique um, experience for, for me, which I supplemented uh, with a ton of uh, sports uh, internship experience from working in the sports information department to the NBA Summer League when it was in Long Beach to uh, my senior year when I was a PR intern for the Lakers. Um, so it really supplemented everything that I was learning in the classroom and applying all that critical thinking and communication skills to the outside sports world. So the Lakers, uh, that position wraps up, you graduate. Was there an opportunity there or did you say, you know what, I want to try the agency route? Yeah, I thought, you know, as, as every, a lot of kids, uh, during that era, they, they were, uh, enamored by Jerry Maguire and, and the sports agent world. Um, and I knew I wanted to work with athletes. Uh, I knew I wanted to work, uh, in some capacity, um, in the communication space, in the PR space and the storytelling, uh, industry. Um, and I thought I, I really wanted to be a sports agent. And, uh, my first job out of college was at a Hollywood talent agency that just acquired an NFL practice. Um, so I started with the, the NFL agents uh, on day one and really built that department and built that program. And after a year, year and a half, um, I, came to the conclusion that I did not want to be a sports agent. Um, I wasn't as interested in the recruiting or the uh, contractual work, um, but I was more interested in telling their stories, the athlete's mm -hmm. stories, and really building their brands through editorial. 
Um, did you pull a Jerry Maguire of, when you uh, did you pull Jerry Maguire when you walked out? Say like, who's coming with me? Did you? Uh, I I don't think I was at that level yet. <laughs> I'd love to do that someday though. That's right. definitely a, a professional right. and a personal goal of mine. But uh, I knew I wanted to um, you know still be in that space, but really hone in on the storytelling aspect right. of athletes. Um, so I, I, I worked, uh, at another, uh, PR agency and then I, I, um, found a job, um, at P at Adidas's PR agency of record working on the Adidas account. And I jumped at that opportunity, um, to really hone my, uh, media relations skills and my writing skills and to, um, you know, get fully, uh, entrenched in everything that the brand had, uh, from a sport and a style perspective. And that's Hill and Knowlton. It is, yeah. It's still one of our PR agencies of record. Um, and uh, after three years there, I was able to to move in house and uh, move up to Portland, Oregon. So you know that transition is one that you see every now and then. And you know wh- what was that like? You know, if, do they ever? I'm sure there's always concerns about a a client. Um, you know, cherry picking maybe someone that works on their account. Was that transition out? Um, let's say, was it awkward at all or, you know, did they support the move? Yeah, fully supportive. Um, and I actually followed my boss up to Portland. So ah. she, uh, uh, worked in house, um, on a contract basis and then moved there full time and was revamping the team. So it was, a uh, a very easy transition. Um, and I, I moved up in a matter of weeks actually. Um, wow. so it was, it was fun because, you know, my interview was basically my work or my portfolio. So I was, um, you know, getting FaceTime with brand executives while on the agency side. And, and once we had a formal sit down interview, uh, it was more of a conversation than, than anything else. So, so it seems like you're thriving there at Adidas. So walk through what the differences are like, obviously Adidas is different from an agency, but the the day to day work, um, you know, the types of things that you were doing for Hill and Knowlton, and then now uh, overseeing PR efforts specifically for Adidas. Yeah, I, I came in uh, in house to Adidas um, as a PR manager for football, baseball, and soccer. And um, throughout my years there, continued to move up and now overseeing the entire PR team across sport and style for the U.S. Um, and we actually had a couple of restructures internally in that time, and I think. Um, you know, my perspective on PR um, mirrored the, the changing landscape of, of editorial um, overall and, and really being rooted in social. And I was, um, you know, um, focused on a day to day basis, um, really staying close with my social and digital and communications counterparts throughout my entire career at Adidas. So um, we were attached to the hip. We still are. And once uh, we had an internal restructure where we um, started these newsrooms, it was a super easy transition for me because that's how I really had been working for the past four years. Um, so it, it, it's exciting to be a part of it because I don't know if any other brands are really thinking about storytelling that way. Um, really looking at a, a 365, 24 seven, um, calendar and an editorial space. So, um, it's definitely, uh, exciting and, and, uh, uh, definitely, um, the the inclusion of analytics over the last year or two has been something that I've been focused on. I've always been a word guy. Obviously, starting out as an English major, um, you know, numbers and data have never really been a part of my life. But since we infused this analytics team into our group, it's really changed the way that I look at PR and storytelling overall, and something that I'm uh, very excited about to continue to infuse in my work in the future. Well, let's unpack that a little bit. So the 365 storytelling storytelling is one side, the analytics are another. So are you able to give an example of maybe some projects that you've worked on or currently working on and how exactly those analytics come into play? You know, are, are you uh, posting a, a story or rolling out a campaign and then day-to-day tracking numbers or you look at it at the end, compare it to other campaigns you're running? Just give me a little bit more detail if you can. Yeah, um, definitely don't want to give away the secret sauce. No, hey, but, I, I get um, it. Well, what's come on? Let's let's get it out there. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, I think it's a combination of of many different uh, functions of our analytics group. I think it's certainly at the end of a project, looking at uh, a, a recap of of all of our data, how well our our social posts do, how well 
our our PR communications, uh, how it lands within the media. And I think sentiment is a big part of that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And for the first part of my career at Adidas, um, we struggled with sentiment, to be quite honest. And uh, over the last year, two years, it's never been better. So it's it's interesting to track um, the sort of consistency and and the frequency of our messaging um, and also look at impact on social and how uh, how a tweet from a specific reporter, how that weighs um, compared to a story on another site. So it's really looking at um, defining uh, who influencers really are within the communications landscape um, and infusing that data back into my communication planning. Uh, I think another piece of that is also athlete impact and and partner impact in general. So not just in the sports space, but really leveraging data to see who our most impactful partners are on social and how we can tell stories through their lens, through their vernacular and through their social channels. So you bring up an interesting point, your athletes, those people that, um, you know, you're partnered with. Um, you know, we don't need to get into specific athletes or, or specific celebrities or anybody like that. But as a as a PR exec, you know, the crisis management is a part of it. So when an athlete maybe does something on the field um, that stirs up some controversy or celebrity or anything like that, you know, obviously that person's brand or that team or whomever has to manage that. But then where do you fit into that as well? Do you have conversations internally? How do we spin this as a, you know, a, a, um, a sponsor of this person or so on? Absolutely. And, and crisis communication and, and sort of reactive versus proactive uh, planning is, is something that uh, we all focus on, um, especially in these moments where something happens, uh, good, bad, uh, whatever it may be, on and off the court. Um, so I think, you know, we, we really take each situation um, as an individual um conversation and and really look at the pros and cons of, you know, do we comment on something? Um, Are we proactive? Are we we reactive? But it is, to your point, uh, a combined effort among the team, uh, the agent or management, and and obviously the brand, um, who is the ultimate partner for this uh, athlete or, or, uh, or style partner. What about for you personally? Is there a, a campaign or a project that you've worked on over the last five or six years there uh, that maybe you felt the most passionate about or, you know, nostalgic? You, you look back and you say, gosh, that was a lot of fun. And even, you know, something where you learned a lot or, or maybe uh, something that you learned from, uh, whether it was positive or negative. I, th- I mean, it's it's so hard to choose just one, uh, sure. especially working across all sport and style categories. Right. Um, but I think um, the work that I've done in football over the years um, has been, um, you know, incredibly uh, inspiring and, and exciting for me. And, and I still am a part of a lot of those projects and conversations. And I think, um, you know, really working towards the common goal um, of the category of really being the fastest brand in football and and focusing on uh, our speed propositions, whether it's our lightest cleat in the game or right. our fastest athletes. I think um, that category in particular is incredibly focused um, on their positioning statement. And, um, you know, it has a trickle down effect across all of the different functions. I think our work in particular around the NFL combine over the last few years has been some of our best work. Um, and really, um, again, everything going back to being the fastest brand in football. Yeah. I I love that campaign. I think it was last year. I just remember a a commercial where they showed a guy running down a street and, you know, it looked like he was running about 50 miles an hour. And I forget what else is going on in the commercial, but, um, yeah, big fan of that campaign. Uh, So tell me a little bit about the structure there. So do you report up through a head of communications or marketing or how is it structured within Adidas? So I report uh, through uh, up through a managing editor of our newsrooms. Um, So keeping the the format of a, of a, a normal newsroom. Right. Um, so he oversees all of the, the PR and social and analytics across um, both of our n- newsrooms in the U.S. So we have one in New York as well. Um, and we're part of a global network of newsrooms. So we have them in all of our key markets across the world. Um, and the U.S. is unique as it's the only country with two newsrooms. So we have coast to coast presence. Interesting. And then is that newsroom mentality, is that unique that you know of in the business? 
I, I think so. I mean, I, I can't speak to uh, uh, any other brands, but I, I feel like um, it's not just the structure that we have, but it's also the, the mentality sure. um, of really being uh, a proactive storytelling unit um, and you know, working across all of our categories on and off the court. And I think uh, we're really focused on infusing our brand, infusing our message um, you know, in moments where we may not normally exist. And I don't know if anyone is, is doing that. Yeah. I've always wondered too, you know, you, you've got another, a presence, another presence there in Oregon, uh, in your space. Um, does that, uh, you know, the proximity, does that breed, uh, competition? Do you think that helps keep everybody in within Adidas and maybe your, even your respective functional area kind of on their toes and always looking to continue to raise the bar? Absolutely. I mean, we're all in the sports industry, so competition is, is you know, what we live and breathe each and every day. And I think, um, you know, having a, a competitor uh, in the same area certainly helps uh, the inspiration process and, and just uh, everybody being focused all the time. Um, but, you know, we have friends over there that, you know, it, it's a it's a unique community. Um, you know, when you walk down the street, you know where somebody works. And it's right. it's always funny, um, you know, at the airport to see, um, you know, all of the, the different brand folks all hopping on the same flight and everyone checking out their footwear and luggage and everything. So right. it's, it's a unique experience for sure. You guys You're, are the you, fastest. You, you know for a fact that that person works at a certain company by the way they, they walk into the airport and what they're wearing. So. Got you. Got to stay on brand. Even in a suit, you've got your Adidas shoes on, and you're you're the fastest in the terminal. You're catching it exactly. Flight. Right. Yeah, I, I can't tell you the last time I wore a suit. So, uh, oh, but, that's nice. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and so, as you look back in your career, uh, again, you seem really happy at Adidas. Um, was that move out of the agency side? Do you think that was the turning point in your career? Or was it maybe even earlier on? You know, as you've learned, uh, whether it was when you were in school and you switched majors, um, where you said, um, you know, this is exactly what I want to do. This is exactly when I got on the path. Yeah, that's a great question. I think, you know, you can certainly have multiple turning points in your life, in your career. And, and I still remember to this day my college counselor in high school, who was actually our defensive coordinator in football and also my AP English teacher, he always stressed that, you know, at that point, the average American changes careers seven or eight times throughout their their life. So uh, the first job that you get is not going to be the last. Um, but for me, I, I, even at a young age, I always knew that it was going to be in sports, it was going to be in some sort of storytelling communication aspect. I think the turning point was the first one, at least, was probably, um, you know, leaving the sports agency world um, and focusing um, on a traditional PR agency experience and really honing those skills starting to really build a media network um, that I still leverage today um, and you know polishing my communication my writing my critical thinking skills I think and I stress this a lot to young professionals or uh, interns who are moving on uh, to another opportunity is really um, spend time at a PR agency if you're truly interested in being a communication executive in any brand um, uh, it really uh, hones your skills and you, you do start to build your media network um, on the agency side. So when you do have the opportunity to move client side, you really are fully equipped to manage all the aspects of a, of a communication uh, position. All right. So now let's step outside of Adidas. I was referred to you by Chris Yates, who's very active on social media as it relates to sports business. You're clearly a player uh, in that world as well. You know, just a quick glance at your Twitter uh, profile. You mentioned again, front office sports. Uh, you're an interactive mentor, South by Southwest. Um, so, you know, and I, I see the article that you posted for Sports Business Daily as well. So talk about what how that plays a role in your career. It seems like it, it keeps your juices flowing outside of your nine to five, so to speak. And, and why mentoring and being involved in these other uh, platforms is important to you. Yeah, I've been blessed to have a large network of 
mentors, professors, teachers throughout my um, obviously scholastic career, but but even in um, you know the first few years of my professional career, and and education is incredibly important to me, and and is something that um, you know I I continue to focus on is is really uh, speaking to schools uh, and students. Uh, last the last couple of weeks, I've been uh, at USC to speak to a class. I've been at Arizona State Sports Law Program to speak. Um, and I enjoy it. I really love, um, you know, learning about the next generation of professionals sure. and imparting some knowledge uh, on them. And, and I'm just I curious, when you, office, when you speak, what are the what are the topics? Yeah, I mean, obviously, everyone wants to know about Adidas and everything that we have going. But I really focus on the storytelling industry as a whole sure. and really um, the fusion of traditional editorial and, and modern social um, and really looking at the future of, of brands, of athletes. Um, and just the editorial landscape uh, overall. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think the front office sports um, contributor opportunity is something that plays into all of that as well. And um, I've worked with those guys for years um, on the other side of the table when they were interviewing me for articles and stories. And I jumped on the opportunity to actually write um, because, you know, when you when you're a communication ex- executive, a lot of your writing is focused on um you know, press releases and uh, things like that. So it's nice to be able to, to be a little bit more creative and talk industry wide about um, trends and, and new opportunities for storytelling. Sure. Yeah. They built a great following. Um, and then just outside of that, it looks like you do some writing as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely uh, looking to, to write more um, and from both a professional uh, level and a, and a personal level. So I definitely uh, am open to exploring that uh, more in the future. So specifically with social media, um, what are you involved with? You know, are there groups that people should be aware of, whether it's on Twitter? You know, I know there's several sports business chats out there. Um, any handles that you would recommend following? Uh, sports Business Daily? I'm sure it's all of the above. But, you know, are there a handful of things that you point to for someone saying, hey, where can I get my fix? Where are people talking about the next thing to pay attention to in sports business? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and, you know, those lists change every day. And that's what's so great about social and and Twitter in particular is for me personally and professionally, it really is such a unique real time focus group um, where from a brand level, we can get a instantaneously uh, read on creative or uh, marketing or communication. You know, we're going to know immediately when we push something out, if someone loves it or hates it. Um, I think the, the sports business chats are, are incredibly uh, useful, and um, I've uh, worked with Chris um, to host one uh, a couple months ago. And I think, you know, I still continue to monitor them. I don't know if I participate as much anymore, but um, you know, from a listening perspective, from a learning perspective, I think those are all very, very valuable. And another thing that I stress to the students uh, that I speak to is is really leveraging your personal brand now on social when you are in school to build your network, to network with um, professionals that you look up to and to really start the conversation now. So when you do um, graduate or are looking for an internship or an opportunity, you already have that relationship based. Um, We've, you know, from a a specific Adidas uh, level, we've recently hired folks that a lot of um, our key players have known on social for years and we've interacted with from a, a, a personal level on a professional level. Um, and it really goes a long way. You get to know somebody um, very well, ironically, uh, via your, your phone or your computer. So uh, I definitely urge students to, to leverage that while they're in school. Right. In shaping that brand, that's such a, a hot topic right now. And I don't want to put you on the spot, but are there two or three things specifically that you tell these students, hey, these are ways to help position yourself now and going forward in sports business? Yeah, I mean, I think in in business and on the personal side, I think really having a clear positioning statement for yourself or for your brand, um, whether that's your personal brand or the one that you represent um, publicly or on social, I think um, taking the time and taking the um, you know necessary steps to establish what your differentiator is um, is going to go a long way, and it's it's going to be the hard part because you really have to look in the mirror and you really have to look across the industry just to figure out how am I different from everyone else. Um, you know, that's applying for this job or that is, um, you know, attending this school. 
um, and really doing the work on the front end to differentiate yourself or at least have um, a statement that um, separates you from the bunch. And everything that you push out on social or, or through your communication efforts should fall back on that or should, it should be the red thread that um, is visible throughout your um, your communication. So I, I definitely stress that now more than ever because kids today, students today are way more brand conscious, brand aware um, than they've ever been before. And I think a lot of that has to do with the accessibility on social. Um, and I think they need to leverage that and really take the time to um, figure out how they are different from anyone else and to really um, promote that um, with everything that they do. You are clearly a very thoughtful leader. Uh, you give back uh, to those that are just entering the industry, about to enter the industry. You've mentioned mentors for you. Uh, are there a handful that jump out to you, maybe someone you met while, who knows, you were interning with the Lakers or just after, that have helped you uh, continue to grow your career? Yeah, I mean, I think at each step of the way, um, you know, throughout my uh, studies and, and throughout my career, I've, I've always had uh, strong mentors and strong leaders. I think um, specifically, um, well, she's not my boss anymore, but she is the head of our corporate communications group uh, at Adidas. Um, I worked for her um, in LA and on, on the agency side, and then she uh, moved up to Adidas to, to run the team. Um, so now I guess we are colleagues, but. And who is um, that? She's uh, Lauren Lampkin. Okay. So she uh, was my boss at Hill and Olton. For years, um, and then took over the Adidas uh, PR team, and then moved over to the corporate team. So we are uh, working together now on all things uh, Adidas brand communication. So she's an SC grad as well, so we have that connection. Right. Um, and it's always nice to have a fellow Trojan up in, in Oregon with me. But uh, um, you know, I've just learned a ton from everybody that I've worked for and, and worked with. Um, and uh, you know, I, I try to to be that sounding board for the next generation. Um, because, um, you know, the, the accessibility that they have now to executives across the industry is so much more than I had. I remember I, uh, told this story to Arizona state recently when I was out there, but, um, you know, how I got my Lakers internship, I was home in Santa Barbara over our spring break when I was in school. And I read an article in the local paper about a long time Lakers scout who's living, living in Santa Barbara. Um, and, um, you know, I wasn't applying for a specific job. I wasn't, um, you know, reaching out for a specific ask. I just thought, okay, I looked him up in the phone book, got his phone number, gave him a call. Um, basically I get to know you, you know, you know, giving him feedback on the great article in the paper. And he was, you know, 60, 70 years old. And I was a, you know, 20 year old college student. So, um, not a ton in common, but we talked about the Lakers and I expressed, um, you know, how much I respected the organization and he offered, he's like, Hey, here's my fax number. Shoot me your, um, this was obviously before fax. Sure. Uh, a lot, a lot of folks were on courier you know, pigeon, on social, send that over. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so I faxed on my resume, not really applying for a job or anything. And then a couple months later, he gave me a call and said, Hey, I just handed your resume to our head of PR. Um, they're going to be starting to interview, um, intern uh, candidates for next season. So, wow. um, and, and a caveat, I grew up not liking the Lakers very much. I grew up a Warriors fan. So, um, this wasn't a fan, um, you know, applying for a job. And I, and I continued to share that narrative in my first interview saying, I honestly, I'm a Warriors fan. I'm not here to, to meet the players or right. to interact with the, the, the executives. I'm here to learn about PR and to, to hone my skills. And, uh, I remember they told me that no one's ever really said that before. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I dislike the Lakers. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm sure. I'm sure they appreciate it. So, what's next for you? What's next for Adidas? Can you give us a peek into an upcoming story or campaign? Yeah, I mean, I think the brand has uh, a historic momentum right now, both from a perception scale and obviously from a sales perspective. I think um, you know the pressure is now on to continue to build that momentum. 
sense. And I, and I think that's exactly what we're, we're focused on is, is trying new things and continuing to um, bring new products to, to market that are really innovative and really um, polarizing. Um, I'm heading out to New York next week. We're opening our new New York flagship store. Um, it's actually the biggest store in the world for us that we're opening. So wow. um, a ton of different uh, events all week with athletes and entertainers. Really um, excited to, to get out there and, and share that story. And we're going to finish the year strong with a ton of new product launches. We just launched uh, Kanye West's new shoe this morning. Uh, we have James Harden's shoe, his first signature shoe with us, launching a colorway launch today. And, and the full launch is next week as well. Um, so there's a ton of, of story opportunities for us. And that's what's so unique about my position is that there's really no off season um, right. working across all the sports and style departments. So uh, we always have a ton of stories going on. And even earlier this week, we had four stories going out in one day and it just really encapsulated the, the momentum that we have as a brand across all of our categories. Yeah. It almost keeps you in that agency atmosphere. Uh, the fact that there is no off season that you've got sports, non-sports, things like that. And then what about, is there a platform or is there a way that uh, maybe someone in your position can reach out to people to mentor on social media that you haven't done yet? I mean, is there a, again, it seems like you've done it all, whether it's talk to classes or participate in these Twitter chats, um, but is there something personally, maybe a goal that you've set for yourself um, that you'd like to accomplish in 2017? Uh, I think I'd like to teach a class or be an adjunct professor, whether it's online or, or in person. I, I recently visited a athlete communications course uh, at USC a couple weeks ago and um, you know, spoke for, for half the class and, and listened for the other half. And it just was uh, an amazing experience to be in front of students again. Um, and obviously being at my alma mater was certainly a, a special experience for me. But I really enjoyed that process, especially, you know, speaking uh, specifically about my work, but also the industry as a whole. Um, so that's something that I'm definitely looking into for the future and, and something that, um, you know, is definitely a goal uh, for myself. My mom's a teacher. So a lot of that has been um, you know, passed on to me, um, whether I realized it or not. So um, that's definitely the next step probably for me to, to take on sometime in the future. What's the most effective way for people to engage with you online? Uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, things like that. And then on the other side, are there a handful of people on social media uh, that you point to as great follows? Yeah, uh, Twitter's probably the best. Um, obviously, you know, everyone in the in the industry gets a ton of emails every day. So, um, you know, and it's it's uh, a tactic that I use as well. You know, when I reach out to media uh, to pitch a story or to to communicate about a potential opportunity or an event, you know, I could email them, I could call them, I could text them. But if I send them a DM or if I tweet at them, they're much uh, more likely to get back to me, which is always an interesting experience. And um, you know, I feel the same way. It's it's a little bit more um, accessible for, for folks than it than perhaps in the past. So um, definitely uh, recommend folks reach out to me on, on Twitter. I'm always always available and, and always excited to, to meet new people and, and share uh, new experiences. Well, Michael, you got to share your handle. Where can people find yeah, you? Yeah, uh, full name. So at Michael Ehrlich. And that's E-H-R-I-L-C-H. E-H-R-L-I-C-H. Got it. All right. You've given advice on branding and all kinds of things over the course of this conversation. Any other advice that uh, you like to give or maybe the best advice that you've received uh, over the course of your career? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think you know, I've been lucky to have so many great teachers and mentors um, and bosses over the years. Um, some of my favorite advice... Um, actually from my mom, um, who, as I mentioned, is the teacher. Um, you know, she always tells me to break things down into manageable increments, um, whether that's professionally, personally, um, if I'm stressed about a project or a deadline, um, to really break things down and then just, you know, um, stack it up until you, you, you finish the, the, the task. Um, and also, you know, it's okay to make mistakes, just make new ones. Um, so don't make the same mistake twice. And I think from a professional, um, perspective. I think um, it's it's always a nice 
opportunity to to be in a place where you can take risks and try new things. And I think currently, you know, in my in my current setup, we have that um, you know, that culture is really um, about um, testing the waters and trying new things. And and it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it and don't make the same mistake twice. Um, and you know, although I am a USC Trojan, I am a uh, big John Wooden fan and Woodenisms are, are definitely still a part of my life. I was lucky enough to meet him and, and get him to sign uh, a couple of books um, after he spoke at a class at USC. And, uh, you know, something that he always used to say, failing to prepare, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. So um, preparation is key um, across personal life, across professional experiences. So um, if you do the work ahead of time to prepare for any situation, you're going to reap the benefits. So you heard it here, folks. Even though Michael has had all kinds of mentors and been around so many impressive people in sports business, it's his mom. You got to yep. listen to your mom. Your mom's got the best advice. <laughs> Absolutely. Always, especially when she's a teacher, she knows best. So, well, leave it to a PR guy to be on message and super sharp. Michael, this is awesome. I appreciate you spending some time with me today before the holiday. Um, we'll obviously be posting this after the holiday. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's been a pleasure to watch you over social media and to engage with you both, uh, preceding this conversation and now during, and I wish you the best of luck. It sounds like you get a really exciting event, uh, coming up with that store opening. Well, appreciate the time, especially uh, ahead of the holiday and definitely excited to continue the conversation and, and always uh, available to uh, to hop on the podcast again. And, and anytime you have any questions or your, your readers or followers or listeners, um, feel free to reach out. Always available. Great. Thanks a lot, Michael. Of course. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thanks for listening to the Front Office Exchange, where you hear about the careers of some of the leading executives in sports business. Visit us at frontofficeexchange.com, on Facebook, at Front Office Exchange, and on Twitter, at Front Office EXCH, to access past episodes, show notes, and much, much more. 